As a former Clinton administration official, you were integral in helping craft policy around broadband, broadband deployment, the internet. Um, are you seeing any of those policies discussed today in the context of moving toward a national broadband strategy? Well, you know, it's like the old joke about therapy is a spiral staircase that you keep going over the same material but at a higher elevation, and I think there's a lot to that. The same questions about what should the government do, what should private companies do, what's the responsibility to bring everybody into broadband, what do we do about special situations in which we have a compelling interest like the hospitals and the health system or schools and the education system, we're back to that. Fifteen years later, we're still asking ourselves that. The Clinton administration, I think, did a pretty good job in the 1996 white paper of the Telecommunications Act. It set up a framework that works. It said, look, you know, it's going to cost a fortune to build a true network. So the, the private companies are going to have to do it. Right? But we want to see the digital divide addressed. We want to see important distance learning, distant medicine goals taken care of. And I think that that's ultimately the framework we're going to arrive at in this round as well. Let me ask you if I could a question about, about private capital and public-private partnerships. I believe the figure uh, over the past two years, um, private industry has invested, I believe, some $120 billion um, in broadband deployment. I believe the stimulus um, is bringing uh, $7.2 billion in available funds, both for, for mapping and deployment. Um, do you feel the stimulus will, will foster that public-private partnership as, as those two sectors come together to not just reach those unserved areas, but also areas where there is service but the demand is lacking? Do you feel the stimulus creates the environment where those things will come to bear? The stimulus alone isn't enough to do it. Uh, and it's not just the matter of money. Uh, part of it is, I think, that we're distracting ourselves with a lot of other stuff. Uh, we're, sort of, we're looking over the company's shoulder an awful lot while they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars and have to spend even more to get this job done. And at the same time, the $7 million was only a down payment on what we need to do. So the, the stimulus was a, a good device and it was important. We inherited such a, a terrible mess in terms of the economy that using it as an opportunity to start addressing a variety of important needs was a good thing to do. But it's really a tentative first step in getting us towards uh, working on the periphery of uh, the market for broadband and bringing it into the center. And finally, if I could ask you one more question, um, the uh, elephant in the room, net neutrality, if, if you will, um, you know, there are a lot of groups out there, um, free press, save the internet come to mind, um, pushing regulation, so on and so forth. I, is, that, is that dialogue, is it a little more aggressive relative to your years in the Clinton administration, and, and is it productive? Um, well, it is more aggressive because the issue didn't exist in some sense back then. And I think uh, part of it is uh, a uh, reaction to uh, the, the indifference of the Bush administration to the social character of the internet. And I think there was a little bit of that. But I, I think it's a terrible danger to progressive people in America and to the Obama administration. Uh, the idea that everything on the internet ought to move at the same speed uh, is a bad idea. There isn't anything in the world that works that way. Some guys use regular mail, some guys use FedEx, some companies have call centers, some you send an email to and they get back to you next week. Everything works with a full range of choice and it's hard to imagine that the internet shouldn't work that way either. Besides, as we, I was telling people uh, at, uh, at this conference this afternoon, when I have my heart attack and keel over, I want the internet-based Bluetooth device transmission of my echocardiogram to move faster than my kid's videos. I don't care if he's using BitTorrent or not. Uh, there have to be priorities. And when you say that there aren't going to be priorities, then you get congestion, you get slovenliness, and you don't get innovation and the like. I know that that's a hard message for a lot of people in the internet community to hear because what they hear is that, uh, well, you know, videos are going to get slowed down and stuff like that because they eat up bandwidth. YouTube today uses more bandwidth than the entire internet did nine years ago. That's unbelievable. So the, the solution 
shouldn't be, well, I tell you what, if it's a video, it's bad. If it's anything else, it's good. But the websites, the people who bring you this stuff, have to decide how important it is to them. Think about this. What if I had three different Skypes? What if Skype one was like the Skype you have where you talk to your friend who went abroad for a semester and uh, suddenly they freeze up in an odd situation and you hope you'll get your connection back? Skype two pays for a little better of a connection and if you want, you can use it but you have to watch advertising. And Skype three pays for the best solid gold connection your friend is going to be talking, dancing, it's going to be beautiful, but you have to pay a subscription fee of X dollars a month. In a net neutral world, you can't do that. That's unbelievable. So we have to start, stop, we have to stop thinking about words like neutrality, openness, they're buzzwords that are being abused, I think, for a political purpose and start thinking about how do we really meet people's needs and is there a road, is there a product, is there any other service where the idea that one size is good for everybody works? I mean, it's not even true for coffins. So uh, that, I think, is the problem. And I think that if the administration gets caught up in that, uh, it's going to chase itself down a hole and will do more damage than we uh, saw. Well, a voice of reason on us on a hot button topic here inside the Beltway. So. I appreciate your saying that it's reasonable. Well, we appreciate your time <laughs> with Next Gen Web today. It's my great pleasure. Great to be here.